This is a geometry problem from Amy 2002. There are 20 congruent circles arranged in three rows and enclosed in a rectangle. The circles touch each other and to the sides of the rectangle as shown in the diagram. Find the ratio of the sides of the rectangle. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications. The key to this problem is that circles or with the sides of the rectangle, they touch each other, which means they only intersect at one single point. For example, these two circles intersect at this red point, or some of the touching points are like these. I shall only focus on the leftmost five circles. These are the touching points, or with the rectangle would be somewhere here. A very important property for circles that touches each other is that if we consider the centers of those circles labeled in green, then the two centers of the concerned circles and their touching point are collinear, which means if I try to draw a line like this to join the two green dots, then it must pass through the red dot in the middle. They must be collinear, and the distance between these centers, these two centers, is exactly the sum of the radius of the two circles. So that's a very important property, because I've managed to connect points across circles and to, create, and to write distances in terms of the radius of the circle. Notice that these circles are congruent, so if I let r to be the radius of the circle, then we can basically write out all the distances in this diagram in terms of r. In this problem, we are asked to find the ratio between the sides of the rectangle, which are, which means the red length, length of the red side divided by the length of the green side. So we need to express the sides in terms of R. Let's go for the easy one first, which is the red one, because it's simply composed of the diameter of the seven circles in the first row. So the diameter of one circle is 2R. So if I multiply that by 7, that will be 14R. And we're done with them on the sides already. Now the harder one is the green side. So we need to make use of the distance between the centers because if I join more of them, you may see the pattern. Let me join centers of the leftmost five circles and you will see that the distance between these two centers are 2r and similarly they are all have length 2r distance 2r between two centers of two circles that touch each other so in other words we have created two equilateral triangles and now to find the length of the green side, or to express it in terms of R, I'm going to split it into a few components. The first, the first two are radius of two circles, the two short green segments, and they are both, they both have length R. So length of the green side is R plus R, and now add it by the height of the blue equilateral triangles, which is over here. Let me label that in red instead. Now notice that because we have equilateral triangles, the height perpendicular to one of the sides, and then this angle, or in fact, all angles in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. 
So that means the height of one equilateral triangle should be 2r multiplied by sine 60 degrees. And because I have two equilateral triangles, I'm going to multiply that by 2, double it. So I've managed to express the length of the green side in terms of r. So now what remains is to find the ratio between red and green. So our final answer should be exactly 14r divided by 2r plus 4r times sine of 60 degrees. If I remove the r on both numerator and denominator, I will get 14 over 2 plus 4 times sine 60 degrees. And that is exactly root 3 over 2. So simplify that. It's 14 over 2 plus 2 root 3. And that's 7 over root 3 plus 1. To further simplify, I'm going to multiply the fraction by root 3 minus 1 over root 3 minus 1 so that there is no thirds at denominator. And at last, we have 7 over 2. That's the product of the denominator multiply by root 3 minus 1. And this is the final answer.